From the time I learned Angular up until a year or two ago, I, like most other Angular developers, coded imperatively. I kept hearing about coding declaratively and coding reactively, but it took me a long time to get a solid grasp on what that actually means. When I did start to understand it though, the quality of my code and my enjoyment in writing it increased dramatically. The concepts seem much more natural and intuitive now, and coding imperatively by comparison actually feels painful now. But getting to that point was not easy. So in this video, I am aiming to give you the brief and simple explanation of declarative code and its relationship to reactive coding that I feel like I needed right at the beginning. So when you first start looking into this stuff, you will likely come across the explanation that when we code imperatively, we are saying how we want to do something, whereas when we code declaratively, we are saying what we want or what something is. The classic example given is that imperative code often looks like this, where we have an explicit set of instructions that are followed to achieve something in a way that is very computer-like. The example you often see for declarative code is that of an SQL statement like this. So this doesn't say how to get the data from the database, it just describes what we want on a more human level. So this is all true enough, but it's also super vague and high level. Uh, my problem was how do I take this declarative concept and apply it to my Angular code? And what do observables and not subscribing to them have to do with all of this? So let's jump into some code and take a look at an overly simplistic example to get right to the heart of what coding declaratively in Angular means. So I have this class member called items left in stock and I assign it whatever value is returned by this method. So is this declarative or is it imperative? So to some degree, what is more or less declarative is up to interpretation. But a key thing to consider in whether something like this is declarative is whether we can look at this declaration and understand what items left in stock is without having to look at other parts of this component for additional context. So I can look at this one line and see that items left in stock is just whatever is returned by this method. So that seems pretty declarative. But the problem here is that there is no guarantee this value won't be changed somewhere else in the code. For example, uh, presumably if some item is purchased, the items left in stock will change. So maybe we do something like this. Now we no longer have the full picture of what items left in stock is just by looking at this declaration. We have to search through this code to see where it is referenced and see how we are changing that value. So not only does this make it a little bit harder to understand what items left in stock is, it also relies on us manually remembering to update this value whenever the stock level changes. So it seems like this value is supposed to be the current items left in stock, but if we buy something and forget to update this value, then it no longer accurately reflects the items left in stock. Which is why with this imperative style code, it becomes important for us to take in the broader context of this entire component to understand what this is. We can't just trust that it will live up to its name of items left in stock. So one way I could force this to be declarative is to do something like this. So by adding the read only keyword, I now know that items left in stock can't change. And so I do have the full context of what this is just by looking at this single line here. But this doesn't really work because we do need to change this value and now our buy item method isn't going to work. So this is where the concept of RxJS and observables and specifically not subscribing to them manually comes into play. So the observable is what allows us to declaratively code what something is, but it still allows the value of that something to change over time. So rather than dealing directly with the values, we deal with the method of observation that controls how that value changes over time. So let's expand this example a bit and try to use an observable to make our code more declarative. And the initial version we create is still actually going to be imperative. Uh, this is an important aspect to understand because just using an observable doesn't make your code declarative. So a key difference now is that rather than manually updating the stock level within this component, we have this observable stream that will emit the new values for us. So this is useful, but this particular implementation has some flaws. And we've also introduced a new requirement here, 
So we are going to utilize this in the template to enable or disable a button based on whether there is stock available. So this can purchase flag is based on the items left in stock, but the problem we have is that this value is sort of trapped inside of the observable stream. So to determine how to set can purchase, we need to get it out by subscribing to it. And then we are imperatively setting both of those values like this. And since we have added this manual subscription, that also means we need some kind of strategy for unsubscribing, which is why we also have this destroy notifier that will emit when the ng on destroy lifecycle hook is triggered. And this observable will automatically unsubscribe when that destroy observable emits. So we are using observables here, but this is still very much imperative. I definitely cannot just look at these declarations here to understand what items left in stock and can purchase are because they aren't even defined at this point. I need to check what is happening in the rest of the code to understand how those values are changed. So to make this code more declarative, we could change it to this instead. So now rather than manually subscribing to observable streams to get their values out, we are using RxJS operators like the map here to declaratively define how the values should be computed. Instead of working directly with the values themselves, we are now just working with streams. Items left in stock is just this stream returned from our items service. And there is nothing else in this component that we need to know about. And this can purchase stream is derived from the items left in stock stream. But again, everything we need to know about it is contained right here. We don't need to search through the rest of the code to understand what can purchase is. So our can purchase stream takes values from the items left in stock stream and then modifies it to either be true or false, depending on whether the items left in stock value is above zero or not. So this declaration here does reference code somewhere else in the component. It's referencing the uh, other stream here, but it is very clearly pointing to the dependency that it has on it. We don't need to search through this code for every place where can purchase is mentioned because its entire definition, including what it depends on, is contained right here. We're not going to run into a situation where some code buried further down in this component is going to change this in some surprising way. We know exactly what it does up front, so this is declarative. We now also don't need to worry about handling the subscription manually as we are just able to pass this stream into the template and subscribe to it with the async pipe. And that is going to handle unsubscribing from the stream automatically for us. So the benefit of this effect only compounds when we have more and more state that depends on each other. Whenever one thing upstream changes, everything downstream from that automatically updates. And that is what is meant by reactivity or reactive coding something changes and then things react to it. So this code doesn't rely on us remembering to manually update things. So not only is this code shorter and easier to understand, it is also much less prone to bugs. So one final important thing to keep in mind is that imperative code is not inherently bad. Declarative code is just an abstraction on top of imperative code. It's higher level code that can make coding easier and less error prone. But at some point beneath the surface, imperative code is still required. And if you are working at lower levels, then imperative code will absolutely be required. This SQL statement does not just magically work. Somewhere it needs imperative code beneath the surface to actually retrieve those records from a database. But at the level of building applications, I'm a strong advocate for declarative and reactive code as a way to improve the quality of your code and your sanity in building and maintaining it. So there is more to know about declarative code, even in the context of Angular specifically, but I think what we have covered in this video gets to the heart of what it is all about. So if you found this video useful, please consider leaving a like or subscribe before you go. And if you are interested in learning a lot more about this style of coding in Angular, Feel free to check out my ionicstart.com course in the description where we build mobile applications with Angular using the Ionic UI framework. All right, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again for the next video.